If you've been flying FPV for a while, you know that the only way to get better is to break things. And sometimes breaking things means breaking batteries. Now these are expensive, especially when you get into the 6S variety like this. And breaking them really hurts in the old pocketbook. So today, we're going to take a look at this one I broke. And I'm going to show you how to save them. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and today I'm going to try to save this battery that I broke doing something stupid. Well, I guess it wasn't stupid. Nothing is stupid in pursuit of being a better FPV pilot, uh, but it was unfortunate anyway in that I destroyed that balance connector on this 6S pack. Now these packs, this is a nice Ovonic 1300 milliamp hour uh, 100C pack actually, and they're like 30 bucks a piece. So I got two choices at this point. I can either destroy this battery or I can try to fix it. Now a lot of people are scared of touching their batteries when it comes to repairs because they are not unknown to just light on fire if you do something wrong with them. So what I'm gonna show you today is the proper way to repair a balance lead and inspect a battery after you've had a hard crash where you suspect there may be an issue with the pack. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at this pack and see if it's actually safe to work on in the first place. And then I'm going to show you how to fix the thing. Yeah, so as you can see, I totally obliterated this balance lead on this really nice Avonic 6S pack. This pack has, oh, I don't know, probably like um, 100 charge cycles on it at this point. You can even see the imprint from the balance lead, which is actually right there whenever I wrecked this thing. I am learning trippy spins, and this was a collateral damage of my trippy spin learning. So, the first thing we need to do is take a look at this pack and make sure that it is safe enough to actually repair this balance lead. And the first thing you need to do when you are assessing a pack for damage like this is take a look at the lead itself. So as you can see, I've really shattered the plastic housing of the lead, but all of the pins seem to be intact. And I don't see any actual wire damage on the balance connector. So that means I didn't rip any of the silicone sheathing of this wire, and it should be safe to repair. Now, one thing I don't know is the state of these connectors as I pull them out, but we'll get there in a minute. I would say that at this point, this balance lead is safe to repair and that the wires are still structurally intact. If I had stripped back some of this balance lead coating, the silicone coating is actually really easy to rip. But if it had been stripped back, I would recommend that we cut this thing off and we start from scratch and solder on a new one. However, today, I'm gonna to show you how to just put on a new housing as that is the cheapest and easiest way to fix this battery. I did mention that there's a good sized dent in the top of this pack where the balance lead actually impacted the tree that I hit during that trippy spin. Uh, but other than that, there's no other structural damage to the pack. The things you want to look for are puffiness. So this pack is not puffy. That means that none of the electrolyte has boiled off for any reason, which should mean that I don't have any weird short circuits inside the battery pack that would cause it to overheat and do that. Uh, there's no deformity of the pack. Nothing too crazy. Now, if your pack is deformed for some reason, or you have more severe dents, or you've ripped the casing, there's some decisions you need to make. Is it worth pursuing fixing the pack? If it's not too bad structurally, if you've just ripped the outer casing, you can repair that. If you've actually ripped into the cells, which are normally like a tin foil lined, you should be able to smell the electrolyte on the pack. The best way to tell if you are leaking electrolyte is to just sniff the pack if you smell something fruity, that's the electrolyte. And that is your key to stop. It's time to kill the battery. Don't proceed any further as that pack will never be safe to use again. If you put that on the charger, there's a probability that you will burn your house down and you need to stop right there because 30 bucks for the batteries is not worth a house fire. However, with this pack, I don't have enough structural damage to deter me from fixing it. So I'm gonna move on to repairing the balance connector. For this repair, it's gonna start with a nice kit of JST-XH connectors. This is a standard plug that is used for the balance leads on your LiPos. This particular kit, which I will link in the description below, came from Amazon. I paid for this with my own money. 
uh, and it includes 2S through 6S JST connectors, male and female. For this operation, you're never gonna need the male because we're just dealing with the female JST connectors, and I'm only gonna use the 6S. But I do have other packs, in fact, I have a 4S that I really need to do this to as well. Uh, so I'll probably wind up using it. It's worth purchasing, it only costs a few bucks. Keeping it around will definitely save you some money in pack repairs. So the first step in repairing this balance lead connector is getting all the pins out of this connector. There's only one way to do this safely and that is one pin at a time. Now, if you're not familiar with the wiring of the balance lead connector, there's always one ground wire, which in this case is red. I always thought it was weird that they used a red wire for the balance lead ground whenever red normally means hot. It's pretty standard in DC that red means positive and black means negative. In this case, that is not the truth. And you'll find that different manufacturers have different standards on this wiring, but there will always be one wire that is the ground and the rest of them are all hot leads or positive leads from the end of each individual cell. All right, so the idea here is now that we have our new balance lead connector, which you can see is identical to the old one, except for it's not thoroughly destroyed. Uh, we're going to take each one of these pins out individually, and as we do, as soon as I take one of them out, I'm going to put it directly into its corresponding spot in the new connector. That way I can ensure that they are not just flailing about in the open any longer than they have to be. Uh, because again, it is a dangerous operation, I'm using a metal implement, and the more time those things spend in their plastic casing, the safer this is going to be. Now these retention pins are going to fight you a little bit. So be prepared to tug on it a little bit. You have to make sure you get in there really good and press the retention pin down. If you don't, it's gonna stay there forever and you're gonna have a really hard time. So you gotta push the retention pin down and pull the wire out. I'll show you that. So you get in there with your tool and you touch that little retention pin back here, which is kind of hard to get to. But now you can see I've pulled one of the wires out and I have a single pin out of this balance lead. Now what I'm gonna do is take my new balance lead and in the exact same order, so I pulled this out of the bottom part of the balance lead with the pins facing up, with the retention clips facing up. So I'm gonna put it in the last slot of the new balance lead with the retention clip facing up. As I put it in there, I'm going to push it as far through as I can and then make sure it's retained. See, that didn't retain very well. If it doesn't retain very well, that means that you've put a little bit too much pressure on this little retention pin at the top of your connector. And what you can do is get with your fingernail in there and raise it up just a little. You don't wanna break it off. But see, I've raised it up. You might not be able to see it on camera. But I've raised it up just a little bit there so that I get a bit more retention. Now I'm gonna put it in the connector again. There we go. And it's in. All right, and if you repeated that process one way at a time, you will eventually have a brand new balance connector on your pack. And if it's a success like mine is, you just save yourself 30 bucks. Pat yourself on the back, five cent connector, $30 pack. I wanna take a minute to remind you that if you are enjoying this content and you find it helpful, please scroll down a little bit, give this a like, it's YouTube, do the things. Maybe other people will see it and it can help them out too and keep them from throwing away batteries needlessly. Not only are these batteries expensive, they are harmful to the environment if you do not recycle them properly and dispose of them properly. Which brings me to my next point. If at any point during this process you feel fishy about this or you smell some of that electrolyte come out and it's really fruity or you get a little spark or you notice more damage on your pack, just stop and destroy the pack. Now there are ways to destroy these packs that you can put them in the trash can safely, but I don't recommend that you do that even if you destroy the pack properly. The best place for these is a recycler. What you should do is get a bunch of your flying buddies together, take your destroyed packs and put them in a box after you've properly destroyed them with your charger or by other means with salt water or some other discharge method and find a recycler that will take them in bulk for you. It's really not worth it for your time to take like one pack to the, the battery recycler. It's just, it'd be pointless to drive down there and do that. But if you get together with a bunch of your buddies or your race crew or whatever you can do 
Maybe you have a bunch of lead-ass batteries sitting around because you love boats and deep cycle batteries. I don't know. But take them to your recycler because that's where they belong, not in our landfills. Now, the first thing you should do after you get your pack all nice and repaired is plug it into your balance charger to make sure and use the balance lead like you're supposed to along with the discharge lead. Make sure you see all the cells you're expecting. Another thing you can do on top of that, if you want to be really safe, is run it through an internal resistance check and make sure that all the cells, in this case there would be six of them, have internal resistance within a certain amount of each other. I'd say within about 10 to 15% of each other. That is a healthy pack. They should all be wearing at about the same rate. If one has a much higher internal resistance than the others, that could mean there's damage in here that you can't see and the pack is going to get really hot in that spot when you use it. And that's how a fire starts on your quad. Not just ESCs, your packs can do it too. And your battery will start puffing and bad things can happen at that point. But if you don't have a charger that does internal resistance or you don't have a device for it, the best you can do is a physical check of the pack. Be really thorough with that. And remember, this pack is not worth your house burning down, no matter how much you want to save it. A broken balance lead is one thing, but if the cells are all ripped open and it smells like a fruit cocktail, this thing needs to be discharged and disposed of. And if you'd like to see more about how lipos work, their chemistry, things like what is internal resistance and what are C ratings and what are milliamp hours and why does it say 6S1P on the pack? What does that even mean? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to do a video about the chemistry and the things, all things battery, if that's something you want to hear. But until next time, I'm Bacon Ninja and I'll catch you later.